Technology, in every sense of the word, has changed and defined the world we live in. It is a part of our everyday lives. Technology can be defined as any tool that can help someone in completing a task. When most people think of technology, they think of the typical electronic devices, such as computers and smartphones. However, technology can be as simple as a bookmark or wearing glasses. In my future classroom, I can see the benefit of allowing students to use portable screens as a tool that allows children another mode of communication, access to content, and can increase active engagement, as discussed in the Bellingham Public Schools video, Technology in Special Education. Using screen can also allow students access to other computer tools that can foster digital literacy. In addition to the electronic technology, there are also forms that I would utilize in the classroom, such as fidgets to help expel excess energy and support a student's ability to focus. I feel like almost all teachers, they just don't identify with a single framework of teaching, but align themselves with influences from a variety of frameworks. One framework that I've gathered influence from is constructivism. Constructivism is seen as a child's way of learning through the process of building knowledge through interactions with their environment. Buckleitner says that technology usage fits within constructivism because applications can provide children with immediate feedback. This allows them to associate the cause and effect relationship between their choices. This gets at the concept of accommodation and assimilation that is a part of constructivism. Another teaching framework that has influenced me is problem-based learning, which is seen as a child's ability to learn through solving an open-ended problem, according to Hughes. By using technology as a supplement to real concrete experiences that children partake in, Technology can be a tool for problem-based learning. Integrating technology thoughtfully and intentionally allows teachers to become learners and collaborators that improve their teaching practices that support student learning in innovative ways. A leader and designer that helps to provide access to learning for all students through a variety of avenues that recognizes the diverse needs of students, as well as an analyst who can create assessments that accounts for students' needs and provide timely feedback opportunities to support digital literacy and digital citizenship so that children can critically examine the tools and resources they use online, and a facilitator who curates the technology and platforms children can access to help develop the ways they problem solve innovatively and creatively. If implemented in meaningful ways which centers learning through developmentally appropriate practices, technology can be effective in the classroom to support active engagement. For young preschoolers, cameras can be used for documentation of their learning, and this is discussed by Bailey and Blagovich. The child narrates their actions and the teachers can transcribe their dialogue and bring the image or video back to the child to reflect on. For older students, it can also provide an alternative mean of assessment. Tests can only measure so much of the child's learning, which doesn't take other factors into account, such as context, language preference, and background, says Ford and Grantham. Technology can also be a powerful tool to support English language learners and children with disabilities. There are many applications that can make content and language more accessible for students, such as Proloquo to Go, a picture word board. Not only can technology be a tool to support children in the classroom, but it can also be a tool to facilitate family engagement. One tool that can build a relationship with families is Seesaw. Seesaw is a family-friendly online journal where families can see the learning of their children even when they are not in the classroom. It helps to make the child's learning visible as the teacher posts a variety of learning moments. Another tool that can involve families is ThingLink. ThingLink is a user-friendly digital tool that allows users the opportunity to turn any image into an interactive graphic. Families can interact with this image and hear their children's voices as they narrate their own process of learning. Like Calder suggests, the purpose of these family engagement tools is to keep the information positive and geared towards learning. However helpful technology can be to invite families into the classroom, it also has limitations. The biggest barrier that online resources create is the one of accessibility. Some families don't have smart devices that allow them to use this application. Lajojovic suggests that before any documentation is shared, that teachers be honest with parents and ask how families use technology at home. This helps to supply teachers with information about the resources families have and what schools can provide. For those families who may not have the proper resources, they can still be provided paper copies of what's happening in the classroom, and teachers can provide translations as needed. It is always important to consider the socioeconomics and demographics of families when figuring out what modes of communication to use. In the end, I think that technology can be beneficial for student learning. It can make material more accessible, active, and foster empowered learners.